So the question of human rights was becoming more and more important. But at the same time, especially after 10 years of dictatorship, well, social conditions and economic conditions was a huge uh, oil prices increases in 82, and that was a very difficult question to tackle from the point of view of the dictatorship. In fact, the gross domestic product on Chile in one year went down 14%. Can you imagine an economy that went down 14%? Unemployment was about 20 or 25%. So the social conditions were extremely difficult, and this was the beginning of the end of Pinochet because social protest emerged in 82, 83. And at the same time, there was some kind of new movements around the old political parties. And here it's important what you mentioned in the sense that the Socialist Party, there was an internal discussion what kind of reform has to be established in, in that parties if they are going to be able to keep and to work together, particularly with the Christian Democrats, that were a very important party in Chile, and to what extent the idea was to restore democracy, and in order to restore democracy, you need a very wide a common front of all democratic forces in Chile, no matter what you think about from the point of view of ideology. And in fact, in 1993, the so-called Alianza Democratica, Democratic Alliance, was the first formal political institution being formed. And at that time, I was rather involved in internal politics in the Socialist Party. It's funny because the fact that politics were forbidden in Chile and political parties were forbidden in Chile, therefore, I couldn't do anything in politics openly. It was a clandestine operation. So no matter I was working for United Nations during the day, in the evening I work in this kind of thing, you know. At the end, when the Democratic Alliance became public, then the Socialist Party asked me to be his representative of the Socialist Party in that alliance. And that means that I have to resign from my post in United Nations. That was a very, uh, I would say, peculiar moment because I remember I, my family was rather big at that time. I talked with my wife, my teenagers, uh, where my kids were already teenagers, and I talked with them and told them, look, I'm going to resign. I think are going to be a little bit more difficult. I'm going to be involved fighting against Pinochet. Among the socialists, like one of the few that I can be, live in Chile. Most of the leaders of the Socialist Party were living abroad. They couldn't return to Chile or they had been killed. So I was one of the few that could, uh, and we started working with some leaders of the Christian Democrats, like President Elwin, like uh, Gabriel Valdez and some others, members of the Radical Party. And during those days, the Communist Party and some other part of the Socialists were very much, uh, in a sense, saying, look, in order to defeat Pinochet, some kind of, uh, the, the usual slogan was, all kind of struggle is justified. All kind of instrument can be used. And we say, look, if you are going to use violent instrument, they are going to defeat us. This is a regular army. You cannot defeat the regular army with two or three uh, cannons, something like that, you know. So I think that was important in Chile. There was a huge discussion among opposition forces of Pinochet. What kind, what kind of uh, instrument are you going to use? And I think that since uh, Pinochet, we knew the constitution of Pinochet was approved in 81, and uh, in 1980, and eight years later, it's going to be necessary to have a plebiscite by which the commanders of the army, the navy, and the air force, and the carabineros are going to propose somebody to continue the work of Pinochet. For us, there was no doubt that the people that they are going to choose were going to be Pinochet. 
So we knew in 86 or in 85 that in 88, Pinochet will have to go through a plebiscite. And that was the first time that we knew in advance that this is the road, the map that Pinochet has to walk in order to remain in power. Therefore, if we are able to prepare ourselves to defeat him in the plebiscite, we can make it. During those days, I remember, it was a plebiscite in the Philippines with President Marcos. And, well, he was defeated. And the question but then was a coup, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And the most difficult part was, how are you going to convince the Chilean people that it's possible to defeat a dictator through a vote? By definition, if you are a dictator, you are not going to give up. 